As we rejoice that there are plans to ease the lockdown that we're living with at the moment, we're not yet allowed to unlock the churches to open them up for services as we used to have them. So for now, we continue to worship at home. Welcome then to this service led from St Paul's Vicarage by me, Julian Hartley, the vicar, and assisted with contributions from their homes by Pam, Roger and Ruth. And as usual, Mel, our organist, who has recorded the hymn music for us from her organ at home and has added the words on screen so that we can join in singing. One of my favourite Bible verses is Psalm 119, verse 105, and it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, O God. May your word show us the path to follow, now and forever. Amen. Acts 7 verse 55 But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears and, yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. 
Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. The reading this morning is from John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Remember, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask, ask me anything in my name and I will do it. Thanks be to God. When I came to St Paul's last year, I was told not to put the church's postcode into my sat-nav, but people invited to my licensing service were given the same advice too. As I wrote today's sermon, I thought I'd check it out once again. And even today, Google Maps that many people use as a sat-nav on their mobile phones shows the postcode located in a back street in a row of houses behind Lidl on the wrong side of Crompton Way from the church. And so a visitor ending up there would be faced by the dual carriageway and a maze of no entry and one-way street arrangements making it hard to find the way to the church. Before coming here, I lived in a sat-nav nightmare area. You wouldn't think it could be so in suburban Greater Manchester, but it was. You see, there used to be 12 coal mines in and around the parish I was in before coming here to St Paul's. All the mines had gone, and most of the roads and lanes that went with them were gone too. But sat-navs hadn't been programmed to know that. So I was used to my sat-nav insisting that the quickest route between two churches in my team was by a road that I knew was no longer fit to drive a car down. And my vicarage at the time was at the end of a long drive, so the house was closer to a road on a housing estate behind my back garden and the houses that backed it onto it and the trees in between. 
than it was to the main road that the drive went to. And one Satnav brand always made the wrong choice when directing people to me. So I was used to people phoning me asking, where are you? How do we get to your place? So I smiled a bit when I saw the Gospel reading for today. There's Jesus and his disciples chatting about the way to go. And there's Jesus telling his followers, I am the way, the truth and the life. Those words have been borrowed for use in baptism services in the Church of England. I was planning to do one today, but it's had to be postponed until after the lockdown is lifted enough to allow baptism services to take place once again. So we would have been welcoming families with young children who are just setting off on their journey of life. What route through life shall they take? Which way will they go? And what of ourselves for that matter, whatever our age, and the people around us? How can we know the way? If satnav tales are anything to go by, people are often being guided the wrong way. But it's not just finding our way around the roads. It's the same in the journey of life. Although we don't often realise that until we end up in the wrong place, somewhere we didn't want to be in life. What's the right way to go? And how to find it? In the baptism service, the parents and godparents are asked, do you come to Christ, the way, the truth, and the life? It echoes those words of Jesus when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I began the service with one of my favourite Bible verses, from Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. These days we tend to treat the Bible as the word of God, which explains the traditional this is the word of the Lord responses at the end of our Bible readings in church services. And with the Bible as the word of God being a light for our path in mind, do you remember the days of paper maps? On a car journey, how often would one person drive and the other navigate to do the map reading? And how many arguments would follow? How easy it is to go wrong. The map's fine. It's just that the person using it isn't a very good map reader, doesn't know how to use it, might not be able to work out where they are. And so in life, how many folk use the Bible? How many folk know how to use the Bible? And how many regularly do? You see, according to some surveys that I've seen, it's reckoned that even many churchgoers don't read it all that often. Is it any wonder that people lose their way in life lose their way on the journey through life, not just with consequences for here and now, but for eternity, not reaching the desired destination? And is it any wonder that the world's as it is? We need a guide to show us the way through life, and the best way through it at that. Where there's a choice of ways to go, when there are decisions to be made, which is the best way to go? People have taken to sat-navs and mapping systems on their phones to help them get from place to place, eagerly or gingerly and cautiously in some cases, but they are an everyday part of life now. But we need something to guide us in the rest of life and our journey through it. That's where the Bible comes in handy. The Bible, the Word of God, being a light to show us the way to go. Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and who invites us to follow him. Let's take up that invitation, and let's take up the Bible, whether it be as a paper book or an electronic edition, and let's learn how to use it well as a map and guide for life, so that, picking up on last week's Bible reading and message, we follow the path that enables us to have life, life in all its fullness. In the name of Christ. Amen. And now, let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. And our prayers continue with the prayers of intercession, led by Roger. Our time of prayer this morning 
is based on the words from John chapter 14. I'm going to take one or two of the verses and help them, uh, use them to help us pray together. So let's pray. And at the end of each prayer, as we're accustomed to doing, if I say, Lord, in your mercy, please, would you respond? Hear our prayer. Let us pray. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Heavenly Father, you are the God of preparation. You prepare the promised land for the people of Israel. You prepare the Jewish people for the coming of Christ. In Psalm 23, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And on the beach at Galilee, the risen Lord prepared breakfast for his disciples. Today, we've been reminded that you prepared the way for us sinful human beings to be able to enter fellowship with a holy God through the death and resurrection. Please prepare us, prepare us. Yes, Lord, please prepare us for whatever lies ahead. Prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, so we can be ready for a very different future than the one we were expecting a few months ago. Prepare your church, and in particular, Lord, would you prepare the Fellowship of St Paul's Astley Bridge, so that we may be ready for every opportunity, every challenge that you give us in the future to glorify your name and to extend your kingdom. Lord, prepare us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus also said, do not let your heart be troubled. Lord, thank you for revealing to the world that God is a God of all comfort and who comforts us in all our troubles. We thank you for that little word, all. Please comfort all who are suffering as a result of this pandemic. Those who've lost loved ones. Those who are diagnosed with this virus, those who are shielding, those who are feeling the strain of isolation, those who find themselves without a job or living with a very uncertain financial future, those forced to use food banks and those who seek to bring comfort to others but are unable to do so. Those living in and working in care homes. And especially, Lord, we pray that you would comfort those dear to us, those known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus said, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Heavenly Father, your Son encouraged his disciples to pray big prayers. We found those verses both daunting and yet exciting. We often feel unequal to the task of praying, but today in simple trust, Lord, you who are the way, the truth and the life, we pray some big prayers. We pray for our world, that it may be stewarded rather than ransacked. We pray for our leaders to be wise and generous rather than foolish and selfish. We pray for our frontline workers that they will be protected and provided for rather than hurt and deprived. We pray for our economy to recover and be reinvigorated rather than to be ruined and wretched. We pray for our church, your church, Lord, to be renewed and refreshed and not stagnant or superficial. And we pray continually for the poor, the hungry, the homeless and the destitute, that they will be cared for and never ignored. 
Above all, Lord, we pray for people to recognise and to receive Jesus as the one who is the way, the truth and the life, the one true way into the presence of a holy God, rather than reject or ignore him. And so we pray that your kingdom will come and your will will be done now and always. Amen. And finally, a prayer uh, that I've often used. It's a prayer for peace. Lord, make our hearts places of peace, our minds harbours of tranquility. So in our souls, true love for you and for one another and root deeply within us friendship and unity and concord with reverence so that we may give peace to each other sincerely and receive it beautifully. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you. to the good news of the things that God has done. Let us affirm our faith as we join together saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Do we join together in the prayer of the grace, saying, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. Amen. And now and in the weeks to come, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.